but primarily or Cuthbertson or someone like that but primarily you're talking about a player who whose main job is being a big bloke but he might he might have nice hands for a big bloke so, sort of thing but that period where we had the ball playing ones and, and maybe even in that um, in that cup final the, the Halifax cup final we saw a little bit of the um, Pendlebury was in it mm. he was built yes. like a he wasn't built like a prop forward. He was built more like a, maybe a, a, a large standoff type. Um, but if you go back before that, some of the other big names we'll talk about were probably, again, more ball-playing forwards, not half-backs who played in the four... Who, you know, not, not forwards who could play in the half-backs. They were definitely forwards. Yeah. But, but they had a bit of ball skill because traditionally they would lock the scrum out translation for australian listeners as well loose forwards is the lock forward <laughs> um the, traditionally they would play there wouldn't they at the back of the scrum they would be that last player in the in the fat in the you know in the in the six in the scrum they would pick up the ball sometimes rather than the halfback uh picking up the ball um, you know, it wouldn't always be the scrum half who picked the ball up from behind them. Sometimes they would pick the ball up and, and pass it or carry it. Um, so, so they were, they did have ball skills, but they were more like forwards with ball skills rather than ball players who just happened to have big bodies. I think. You know, yeah. go further back in time. So I, I don't. So I don't think it's that hugely different now to what it might have been in those in that sort of era in the sort of 70s and, and that sort of time but certainly we had a spell didn't we where we had probably the best players in our competition in the first five years or so of Super League were, were tended to be loose forward to had a bit of gameplay about them um, yes it, we're going to talk about some of the names and we'll throw in some of the other names as well but it, it Maybe it feels like it's lost a bit of the position's lost a bit of that mystique. When we had uh, David Pye on talking about second rowers, he said, he kind of said that every second rower in the in when he was coming through in the 80s and early 90s, every second rower wanted to be a loose forward. Yeah. Because <laughs> because they all thought they had good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Didn't. It was kind of a. <laughs> A position that was put on a pedestal is like a a special position to have. So so because of that, obviously maybe we ended up with the best players in that position too, which is why we're going to have plenty to talk about. We should probably get yep. onto it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first we have Doctor Bob, and unsurprisingly, he talks about Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was possessed by a, I don't, I don't know what a, a gin is, or if that's a typo, or what it is. Yeah, I think he means some sort of hoodoo on him in that New Zealand. Th- there was, there was a hoodoo. He didn't some, yeah. kick it dead. Wasn't seven <laughs> tackles in those days either, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the sheer manly delight of Cuthbert. Two interesting names, completely different players, but yes. <laughs> yeah, and. Strangely, sort of, you've got one that's a halfback who'd play 13 and one that's a prop who'd play 13. Exactly. In their moulds, you know. That's, um. Well, yeah, that's a good starting point. We've talked about Sinfield before. I see him as a halfback. I see him as a really good captain with a really good kicking game. And actually, when we were watching those Challenge Cup finals, he didn't start any of them at loose forward in, in that BBC class, Cup Classics. And he did win the, the Lance Todd, didn't he, on the losing side in that in the final against Hull FC. Because uh, yes. probably when the voting was done, they thought he might have just edged it. Yeah, they were ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, to, 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 me, to me, he's a six masquerading as, masquerading as a 13 at times. Yeah. Um, but obviously almost half of his games were played in the 13 probably he played in that one position more than any of the others because his halfback time was split between six and seven uh kind of the way the way it mapped out i suppose um 
Lee Whitnell said, I like a loose forward to be a big halfback, and Sean O'Loughlin has been the best of this dying breed in my time. Special mentions for Mark Flanagan and John Wilkin. Morgan Knowles is the best uh, the best under 30, and with the right application, Harvey Levette could be great, uh, future great too, in my opinion. Uh, Neil McEwen says, best I've seen live is Sam Burgess. Uh, best in Super League is O'Loughlin for his longevity. Yeah, it's a bit biscuity though, isn't it? Uh, and the impact he's had on his team. Uh, special shout out for my club is Hep Cahill for the service he gives to Witness, uh, often playing injured and out of position. Yeah, Hep Cahill was one of those absolute guaranteed stats roundup guys. If you didn't have Hep Cahill in your dream team, um, you were picking the wrong dream team. He he was a <laughs> massive stat scorer. Um, was was Hep Cahill when he was in the Super League with with the Witness Vikings? Uh, Sam Burgess is another one of those players. You know, is he a prop? Is he a, a loose forward? I think probably internationally for England, he's played more of his games in other positions. Um, but for the for the for Salves, he was pretty much thirteen every week wasn't he for his career there yeah and actually get to... up his stats and see where where that looks at but you know you talk about biscuits and stuff you know it can't be a biscuit when you play 450 games in a, in a 19 year career but whatever um <laughs> but yeah so sam burgess as a loose forward where do you you know do you see him as that i do yes because because he he for me he epitomizes we talked about this before that he could play anywhere he wanted but um he's the kind the the prototype of the the guy who can who can take the take the you know the difficult carry but can handle the ball as well um so to me he is he's the you know he's the prototype for what a uh, um 13 you know if you could have a 13 like Sam Burgess in your team you'd take it wouldn't you yeah, so looking at his club career stats, he's pre- played more games at, at loose forward than anywhere else. Actually, internationally, he played started eight games as loose forward and eight games in the second row. So, you know, kind of close there, closer, closer than I thought. thought. Um, especially with how many games Sean O'Loughlin managed to play still for England. He's <laughs> played more games at loose forward than any other player for England, Sean O'Loughlin. Far I mentioned biscuits in this, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah most of his games like you know the biggest number is at loose forward and he mixed in between prop and loose forward but i think um but i think you always people always respected that he had a pass and an offload didn't he and like yes. he could he had that physicality that he could he could hit you but he could also hit you and pass it after he's hit you or pass it just before he's hit you and where the hit that's that's the physicality that's probably why he's retired relatively young <laughs> as well that, that's why he's shot this foot yeah, yeah that's why he's 31 and, and, and scrapped it whereas Sean O'Loughlin who passed it quite a lot before the line <laughs> maybe um, self preservation yeah, a, a, yeah. a little bit has managed to play 400 and odd games whereas the one that isn't the biscuit has only managed to play 300 and odd games <laughs> um, right Tom Eckley said that Sam Burgess try versus New Zealand remains uh, it, versus New Zealand in that game remains one of my favourite memories oh, Lachlan and Sinfield also great to watch from Warrington, Griggs, Solomona and Ben Murdoch Masilla on occasions have been incredibly fun to watch another I found entertaining was uh, Glenn Stewart so I mean yeah Burgess steamrolling on to, uh, to some good play down the middle and absolutely dominating in the opposition like you say, that's the that's the thirteen you'd have in it. Um, but Glenn Stewart, he was a ball playing thirteen. Yeah. Until he came to came to our competition and was kind of nothing at Catalans. But do you remember that? God, I, I, you, to be honest with you, I'd totally forgotten that's what he did. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> My God, but you know, um, it, it, at least in a manly shirt, he was a yeah, he was he was a. Um, he was a very good 13. I thought so. Maybe a little bit unlucky um, that at rep level, probably people wanted to go with a gallon type who mm. would be a bit more of a third prop and, 
you know that oh, well, yeah he's just a prop player who might occasionally <laughs> yes. produce a bit of magic but more would produce a bit of inspiration than a bit of magic yeah. yes Solomona obviously was a player who played for the Bulls as well as for Warrington mm. Mercurial he didn't, um, really, he didn't really have a position he just kind of popped no, up didn't. and fucked me off <laughs> <laughs> Even when he was at, at Wakey before you, I think he scored an important try against Wigan that stopped us having a chance of playoffs one day. One yeah, year. He, he he was one of those players that, that, as you say, when he's in the opposition, you you fear him wherever he is. Um, very unpredictable. You know, you talk about hands. That that guy had hands. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And... Uh, if only we'd kept him on the pitch in 2007, we, we might be uh, in a very different world. But anyway, because um, that was it. Famously, we took him off. We, we, we arrested him for, for, for the next weekend. Yeah, and him we and didn't need Terry him. Newton were both yeah. arrested, weren't they? For Well, took they both came back on in the end. Yeah, but, it was, too little, but, too late. but momentum had switched and it was too late. But in anyway. fact, didn't he come back on and nearly set up the comeback winning try? But the pass went to gra- but with the, the offload he did, speculative, it had to be at that stage. Didn't it just drop short of the player and it just the player it went to just knock on? I th- I'm pretty sure he nearly created a try when he did come oh, back. Oh, I've, I've, I've blacked it out, mate. <laughs> <enough>. Never happened. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Right, um, where are we at? It's, uh, Matt Hardiker. Matt Hardicke, yes. Uh, this is, we seem to breed great loose forwards. O'Loughlin, Sinfield, Farrell, Hanley, Burgess, Sculthorpe, to name a few. There's quite a few names there. Um, overseas, Jason Taumalolo is on another level. Well, he certainly is uh, internationally. Um, I, I, I don't think... You won't get much disagreement with the fact that Taumalolo is the best 13 in the world at the moment, will we? No. I don't think so. Uh, that's his position. He plays it differently to everyone else that was in that list, really, maybe other than Burgess. Um, but it's it's that he just thing does what that he wants. Talking about about how it used to be that the best forward would end up in the 13 position. That's what's happened with Tamalolo. The best forward on the yeah. on in your squad has ended up in the 13 position. The, the kind of the linchpin position of your pack yeah um, that's what's happened with Tal Malolo I, I, is the way I see it you know is 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 yeah the best in the world right now <laughs> he just does what he wants and a few other names that we're starting to see for the first time bloody hell we've got one two three four fifth person in before Ellery Hanley's mentioned that can't be possible <laughs> yes. this is absolutely <laughs> ludicrous <laughs> and actually, yeah we haven't had that we haven't had a mention for Skullthorpe yet either before then. No. That's craziness. That's craziness. Yeah. I mean, Hanley is... I mean, God, you, you, we don't need to eulogise about how good a player Ellery Hanley was. Um, that was another but, example of your best forward ends up playing 13. Yeah. He was just the most... <sighs> When you watch highlights of him back, because obviously I, I never saw him play for Wigan Live. It was before my time watching the club. Um, and I'm guessing it was before your time watching Northern as well, because he it came was. To Wigan obviously, in he was he was talked to, you know, in revered terms. And, and even though he was a Leeds <sighs> player by then. Well, well, yeah, I mean, but I mean, his, his his first year at Bradford, he scored something insane, like forty-five tries or something stupid like that. Um, you know, as a as a you know um, quicker and, and younger player, but he matured, didn't he? And, and um, you know, he really made the thirteen and his own, really, as a as a um, as a more established player at Wigan and then at Leeds. So, yeah. Yeah, he's 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 an immortal player. So, so yeah. Yeah, the way he ran, the you know the sort of grace and um, strength, and just a different different level to to everyone else he was playing against at that time. I think in the in the most, especially in the sort of late eighties, around the turn of the nineties stage. Um, Jay at Jace two five one one just said uh, Paul Scholthorpe. 